one two three toy back again with a brand new video and boy does it feel good to be back i don't know if you guys realize but i was out for the past couple weeks with the flu so i'm really looking forward to getting back on some videos for you guys and getting some really cool videos out to you starting with this one now a lot of people have been asking uh questions about resistors what they do and different ways to attenuate speakers and so that's what this video is going to be about it's going to be about three different ways in which you can attenuate a tweeter and uh, which is called an l pad and so we're going to talk about three different ways in which you can do that and we're going to show you some of the pros and cons or why you may or may not want to use each one so let's go ahead and talk first about what an l pad is and why you might need one all right guys so let's go ahead and assume that we're going to make a typical two-way speaker with this wave core woofer which was picked completely by random uh, one of the first things we're going to want to look at is its sensitivity level now this sensitivity level is 88 decibels and if we were to take a look at the dayton tweeter let's just assume we're going to use this tweeter we're going to look at its sensitivity level and it is 93.5 now you notice both of them will say 2.83 volts at one meter now what does that mean that means that if we were to put 2.83 volts through the amplifier and we were to put that particular driver one meter away, which is three feet away, that's how loud it would be, or that's the sensitivity of it. So this particular tweeter would play 93.5 decibels, and the wave core driver would play 88 decibels. Now that's a five and a half decibel difference. Now that is a big difference, and that's before we even to take into account stuff like baffle step loss and other things that the wave core driver might have. So realistically this tweeter could be playing significantly louder than this particular woofer well, we don't want that we want to make sure that the tweeter and the woofer play at a, roughly the same sensitivity so how do we do that well that's what an l pad is for so in order to really show you that i opened up xsim and i imported that same tweeter that we we're looking at which is rst 28f-4 and I put a simple second order crossover on it. So if you notice, there is a resistor here and a resistor here. They're both shorted out, meaning that they're not doing anything in this particular design as of now. They're shorted out because later I am going to unshort them or just make them normal so that you can see what they do. So right now, the only thing that's hooked up is this capacitor and this inductor. This resistor over here, once again, is just put out to the side for later in the video so if you notice here is the frequency response that we have right now of the tweeter by itself with that second order crossover and this is the impedance graph right here the impedance graph goes to about four ohms and starts up really high and then of course just does a gradual slope down now it's important to note that when we're looking at these you need to pay attention to both the frequency response and the impedance graph because that does make a difference in what we're doing so let's go ahead and first show you what is probably the most common um, l pad that you're going to see or the most common way to attenuate a tweeter that's because almost every big box brand speaker that you buy this is basically what they do they just put one resistor after the crossover network and before the tweeter and yes, it does make a difference on where the resistor is, and we'll see that later in the video. So if we were to um, tune this and make this, of course, just a normal resistor, what we're going to notice is as we turn this resistor value up, keep an eye on the frequency response. The higher the value of the resistor, the more it's going to attenuate that particular driver. That's important to note. Now, if you notice... That wasn't a linear response going down, right? If you notice, let, let's look at that again. We're going to start attenuating this more. Let's put that back up to one so that you have, oh, let's put that back to one so that you have an idea of what's actually happening. Now, keep an eye on this low end and this high end. You're going to notice it almost looks like someone uh, taking either side of a, of like a barbell, like a real strong guy taking a barbell and just bending it. Or maybe you're lifting weights and you see those heavy weights on either side and they just start to bend down on the sides keep an eye on that so as we start attenuating this up the high end is going to start going down and so is the low end and they're going to continue to go down around what looks like a fixed point and it is and that fixed point is right about here which is at 2700 and that's because that's where we crossed over the 
particular driver. And we can see that by just adjusting this up and down. If we were to adjust this, you can see that that hump changes. But for now, we'll just put it back at 4.5. Now, it's really important to note that for a couple reasons. The first reason is, once again, the more we, we do to this, right? So look at that again. The more we do this, the more that high end starts to go down. The high end is affected a lot more than with other types of L pads. Now it's important to note that because if you're designing a speaker and you notice that that high end's dropping off too fast and you're using this type of L pad, well, it might be smart to switch to a different L pad, which we'll show you later. Uh, another reason why that might become problematic is maybe in order to really attenuate this down, you start getting that hump here. Well, that's also not going to be something that you're going to want in your frequency response. So once again, you might want a different type of L pad. And the other thing is this also does affect your impedance. They all do. So you always want to pay attention to your impedance and see if it is getting in uh, an area in which you don't want it to be. So maybe it's going below the minimum impedance that you want it to uh, be at for your particular design. Well, once again, you're going to want to take that into effect. So you'll notice that this really does shape the response of the tweeter curve. And that's important to note because if you don't really want to shape it, this is probably not the right one for you to choose. So let's go ahead and show you what you could do. What you could do is put another resistor right here. Now, if you notice, this resistor is going to be uh, touching this other resistor and the positive end of the tweeter and the other side is going to go to the ground. So it's now parallel with the tweeter and this one is in series with the tweeter. Now, we noted that if we were to take this series resistor right here and turn it up, right? The higher we go, the more it attenuates it. Now it's the exact opposite with this resistor. The higher we go up, it doesn't do anything. The lower it actually attenuates. So let's talk about why you might want to do this. Well, first of all, we mentioned that this resistor starts to shape it. So let's just assume that this is the shape that we want our tweeter to be in. This is actually a fairly decent shape. So let's just say that. that so that's the shape that we, we want the tweeter at, but it's still not at the place of where we want it to be. So maybe it's still playing three or four decibels too loud. What do we do? Well, we put the second resistor down and when we do that, we're gonna lower the resistance. The lower the resistance, the more it's going to attenuate. And as we start lowering it, you're gonna start seeing, oh, there goes that tweeter level down. And now it's just dropping that whole uh, shape down. It's not actually affecting the shape of the tweeter anymore. Now it is still affecting your impedance, but it's not really affecting the shape so much anymore. So that's important to note because if you just need to sh drop it a few decibels and you've already shaped it well with the first uh, resistor, you can now add the second resistor just to get it to where you need it to be as far as your sensitivity of your entire system response. So this is good to use when you've already shaped that response with both the crossover and that first resistor. This will just help you attenuate it a little bit more to get it hopefully to play well with your midwoofer. So that's the second way to attenuate your driver. Now there is one other way and this one you do have to be careful with and I'm going to talk to you about why you might need to be careful with it after I show it to you. Now this is putting the resistor in front of the crossover. If you notice this is the only time we've talked about putting the resistor in front of the crossover. Everything else has been after the crossover network. Now, because this is in front of the crossover network, this is going to see more power. And um, that might be problematic depending on how much power you're going to give the speaker. And this would definitely be something that I wouldn't use in a three-way design if I was using it on the midwoofer. If I'm using it on the midwoofer itself, this would not be what I would personally choose to use because it would probably get too much power and get very, very hot and you might need multiples for that matter just to even uh, allow it to be able to handle the heat that's going to be dissipated by it. So uh, you're typically only going to be using this on, on a tweeter uh, that's crossed over higher. So this particular one is different 
than here. Now remember, I said, you know, placing components within the crossover network, it actually does do different things. And this, if you remember, when we had this resistor at the, uh, after the crossover network, it really started shaping that uh, high end and started really pulling that high end down. This really doesn't affect the response that much. Now that's important to know because if you already have a tweeter that's pretty linear already, so you have a pretty good response from your tweeter and you don't really want to shape it very much, this might be the right L-pad to choose. Just put one resistor in front of the crossover network and it's going to do very little to the actual shape of the response, which is really, really great. It also, once again, affects impedance the least, right? So the more we attenuate it, the less it actually affects impedance. Once again, though, it's going to get it's going to get hotter faster. So uh, depending on how much power you're going to be giving this particular speaker, you might need to do multiple resistors in front in order to dissipate that, or uh, a bigger resistor like a 50 watt or more. Depending on once again, it depends on your design. It depends on what you're doing. But that's going to be the third one, and that one is really, really good if you have a higher-end tweeter that already has a really flat linear response. You don't really want to shape it any. You just go ahead and throw one in front of the crossover network. All right, guys. Now, that's really the three that I wanted to talk about. It's important to note, once again, if you're going to design with any one of these three, pay attention to not only frequency response, but also pay attention to your impedance. If your impedance is out of whack, and your frequency response looks good, it doesn't really do you any good because your amplifier may not even play it. So pay attention to that. Now, what I would challenge you to do is in your own designs, when you're looking at these things, pay attention to these, try a couple different ones out and see which one might actually work for your design and start really uh, playing around with these different resistors because you can really do a lot with them and you don't need to necessarily use uh, one particular L-pad, depending on your design, is going to depend on which L-pad you're going to choose. All right, guys, if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, leave them in the description below. As always, if this is your first time here, or if you enjoy uh, building speakers, learning technology, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I'd love to have you guys. All right, thanks, guys, and have a great day.